All right, folks, uh, we apologize uh, for the darkness there, but uh, one of the lighting guys on scene has promised us that he's going to give Ted Lerner a spotlight tomorrow uh, for, to do the intros. But right now, we do have Francisco Bustamante. We got Nick and Ingram, Ingram in the booth, right? Uh, what? Yeah, Majid, Mr. Majid in the booth, and uh, they're going to call it like they see it. Welcome aboard, guys, and let's get it done. There Thanks, you go. Uh, Francisco just. Well, I think Velma's moved to uh, Fresno, California. That's right. For and, the last. Uh, he was helping a friend of mine uh, that owns a billiard room there called Diamond Billiards, uh, Sherry Dam Damien. I think he uh, worked uh, and helped with uh, Diamond Billiards and. Uh, Wow, I like the action he got there. He that got was a little, a little too bit much airborne, wasn't it? But boy, he hit that pretty hot, didn't he? Bit of uh, adrenaline there, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the cue ball flies off the table. So in this tournament, you uh, on a foul on the break or scratch or off the table, uh, uh, you get ball in hand, but you have to keep the cue ball behind the line. And, uh, yeah, you have to shoot within the kitchen and shoot forward, right? You, you cannot shoot back. No. Which, which is a good rule. I like it. So it'll be interesting to see what he takes here. Looks like he's going for the stripes. He has uh, one problem, I think. The 15 right by the 7 looks very tight. I'm not sure if it goes. Well, he could play it in that upper corner pocket. Yeah. I'm not sure it goes in this lower pocket, but yeah, if he gets straight in on the on the 11 and then shoots the 15 in the top. And that's what he's looking at. And uh, yeah, nice shape there. He's kind of, he would have liked to get a little more to the left. Uh, yeah, to be he, perfect. Yeah. He's going to have to hit this with a, maybe a little more speed than he would like. Mm -hmm. but, uh, to get out of there. To get above at seven. Okay, so he's got a 10 ball in the corner. A little bit tricky, but I fancy him to get it. Well, it's not a gimme, but no. uh, tough shot, maybe the opening rack, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, that was nothing but net there now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you probably take the green stripe here, come up above and uh, get the ball on the rail, and then play the red ball and get back down table for the eight. So uh, Francisco's got a good chance here to... Uh, get on the board first yeah I like his chances here yeah just uh, no real problems I don't think uh, Francisco has played too much eight ball in his career he's more of a rotational player and a great rotational player too he's a former world nine ball champion Yeah, I think he said he lived in Germany for a long time, and I think he played some A ball when he was there. I think. Oh, okay. They, I think he might have played some of the in the leagues there. And, uh -huh. uh, Francisco Bustamante. Well, when, as soon as he went 10-9, I thought, wow, I was up 10-2, and all of a sudden, 10-9. You know, oh, through, let's, through let's no real fault of mine, he just played great. A few dry breaks, and he was breaking and running out. Let's so listen to the break here. This is a monster. Wow. <laughs> uh, good old time pool from one of the greats of the game, Francisco Django Bustamante. Didn't I tell you guys that was an explosion? Now it's take what you make, which means if you make a stripe, you have to play the stripes. You can't have a choice and obviously the idea behind that is to uh, toughen up the game yeah exactly Ted we've got slight variations to the regular game of eight ball here a few different rules that make the game tougher and uh, they're good rules 
Otherwise, April can be a very, very easy game. Well, looks like he made, if I'm not mistaken, no, he, so he's got to go with uh, stripes. He's, he's, yeah. he's made a stripe, so he has to go with stripes, yeah. Slightly overhit that ball. So your opinion of these new rules, such as the uh, break box, if you'll see there's uh, those, the, the top of the table is divided up into three. You cannot break out of that big box in the middle. Uh, that and the, uh, the one ball, uh, you must hit the top ball first. Exactly. And uh, then the take what you make. So what do you think? Is it really toughened up the game? It, it has for sure. I mean, in regular eight ball, you can break from anywhere behind the line and you can um, hit, you don't have to hit the first one ball, you know, the, the head ball. But now we've changed the rules, made it a lot tougher. And uh, the, the break is tough, yes. From the sides, it's actually the physics of the rack. If you break from the middle, the physics of the rack enable you to get more balls in. Breaking from the, the, the corners now, from the sides, it's a lot tougher and um, it's, it's pot luck really if you make a break, uh, make a ball, sorry. But I like the rules, you know, it ma makes the game tougher and uh, you see some real uh, good pull. Well, you, you, have to f you have to really play well, you have to fight to win the, these matches, you know. Well, now he's... Uh Bumped into that stripe there, and uh, it's sort of tied up with the six. I believe it passes, though, into the bottom right-hand corner. It, it passes into the bottom right-hand corner, but uh, he has to get position on it. And he hasn't got position on the 15. He's on the wrong side, so I think he's going to try and bank the 11. And then negotiate a route. Nice bank. And it looks like he's just about got the angle. It was a nice kiss on the five ball there. I think that's the five. So he can just stun over and now shoot the, the, the pink stripe in the same pocket, I believe. Let that get away from him. And here's a good chance for uh, Foldesh to get one on the board. The former world junior champion. That's right, yeah. I, I grew up playing pool with uh, Vilmos on the Euro Tour, and he's a, a really tough competitor. Um, he's. Uh, in the last five or six years, he's moved to America and he's playing a lot more pool. And uh, he seems to have improved his game. I just put the commentator's curse on him. This <laughs> is the ball. But um, he had a kind of safety in mind there. There was no real damage to be done, even if he missed that ball. So um, Django's in some trouble here. Yeah, for the viewers at home who don't know it, uh, Francisco Bustamante's nickname is Django. I don't know what that means or how he got that, Ted. Probably, if I if I know, you know, being, having I live in the Philippines, it probably had something to do with a movie character. Okay. Uh, okay. At the some film, point, uh, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, it's like uh, Lee Van Corteza. He was named after uh, Lee Van Cleef, the old uh, okay. Western movie actor. Okay. That's. Pretty <laughs> that's cool. uh, I, I know a lot of guys get these kind of nicknames in the Philippines. So that's all uh, Francisco could do, really. He could only see this, the edge of that strike ball, and he made a, a legal hit. We have a big crowd here at Steinway Billiards, and it's in the Queens area of... New York City. Yeah, and what a great pool room it is. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, great, great atmosphere, great food. Great food, yeah. Everybody's just been super friendly here. So if you're in the New York tri-state area and you like great pool, make your way over here. It's a great event. We've got players, uh, the best from all over the world. 
duking it out. About $100,000 in prize money, $20,000 to the winner. This is the first leg of the World Pool Series, a new tour put together by uh, none other than uh, multi-world champion Darren Appleton and his team, but it was really the uh, push of uh, Darren to get this thing going. It's uh, four events, one each quarter, all eight ball, and which will be played in 2017. It's set up like a tour with points and ranking points, and there's even uh, WPA ranking points involved and even Moscone Cup ranking points. That's so right. uh, this is uh, starting off as a, a great thing. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's... Um unbelievable what what Darren's hunt done here and uh, his team you know I mean it's only the first uh, tournament of the series and uh, it can only get better that's the best thing about it I mean it's great for the players too we, we have four more events and uh, good money up for grabs and uh, good competition best players in the world and uh, it's really exciting for us as players you know? I think with with and in the context of, of pool and how it's set up, so many of the pool tournaments out there are one-off tournaments. They're just a tournament. There, there's no sort of vision and plan, and I think that's what people see or, and are optimistic about the World Pool Series is that it's been set up like a tour. And I, and I also like the fact that they're keeping their expectations modest and not trying to shoot for the moon in the form of like a Kevin Trudeau at the IPT right, many yeah. years ago and yeah. just trying to, you know, blow it out the box right away. You know, they're trying to work from the ground up. Nurse it slowly. Put, yeah. put some roots down and, and, and just make a tour and something that players can look to and, and rely on. All right, now. Yes, important uh, that you shouldn't run before you can walk. So... Instead of putting hundreds of thousands of dollars up like Kevin Trudeau did for the IPT, this is a kind of nice, nice um, kind of, uh, not average pot, I would say, nice juicy pot, but not yeah. too big. Well, know? for a first event, $20,000 first prize is a really nice first prize for pool. Definitely, yeah. And I, I just the players have come from all over the world, and everyone's really excited. It's great to see. Our next event is in April. Will also take place here at Steinway Billiards in New York City. Vilmos Foldesh here, looking like he'll get one on the board. Yeah, no real problems here. Should uh, tie up the match. Although he's got a little bit funny on this six ball. He has to go up and down table. Should be no problem though. Played that shot nicely with the inside English. Perfect shape on the eight ball. Now, Ted, rumor has it that um, this was originally called the World Eight Ball Series. Definitely the biggest game in uh, the UK. And, and I think, yeah, the idea is to build bridges to the amateur game here in, the, in America. So the amateurs right. have a tour to look up to. And yeah. Darren, you know, has been talking about getting some of these amateurs and holding qualifiers and getting them to yeah. qualify for the tour, which would yeah. be great. Yeah. So we have a uh, stripe down. Stripe down. And so he uh, has to shoot stripes. Well, no, I believe a solid as well. Oh, really? Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh no, no yeah. stripe down. Only so he has. Yeah. So he has to shoot. Stripes. So take us through the uh, the thought process here. Uh, some amateurs, uh, you know, I, I, what I've noticed in the pro level, this is kind of a different eight ball. What are they thinking about here? What's he looking at? Is he looking how far down the road? Is I mean, he he, he's going to try and um, deal with his problem balls as soon as possible. Now his problem ball is the ten ball, as you can see because he's got no po no pocket for it, really. Yeah, that's up at the top right. Just yeah. uh, the, it looks like a white ball, but it's, yeah, it's the at white the top of the box. Stripe. It's uh, probably the, the closest ball to his cue ball now. And he'll probably shoot that down onto the nine ball and get that out of the way. And then it opens up the whole rack, and then it's boom, boom, boom. Thank you very much. See you later. So take care of your problems early on. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to leave them to last because they can go wrong. 
It's a bit of a metaphor for life itself, you know. Yeah, Solve your yeah, problems exactly. before you <laughs> before you move on and try to accomplish anything else. Exactly. Interesting. Nick Barner was talking about that he, he likes to work balls at one end of the table, clear that up, and uh-huh, then go back uh-huh, and go uh-huh. down to the other. I don't know. How do you, how do, you do it? Yeah, I mean, m- most players would as well because uh, you don't really want to move the cue ball that much. You want to play short stop position, you know, just stun balls and roll balls a little bit, not move the cue ball too much because when you're moving the cue ball, there's more margin for error. Things can go wrong. So a little little section of the table at the time is probably a very good uh, option. Yeah, does this does this ball pass into it the? It does co- does pass. It's a little bit tight, but he can just slide it off the long rail. There you go. Well, there you go. He's uh, taking care of it. Everything yeah. at the top of the table. Now he's going to work his way down, and you can see the eight ball still inside the triangle. Yeah, so he takes the the ten ball now, and then leave the fifteen in the side or even the top pocket, depending on the angle he gets on the shot. I remember watching Vilmos ten years ago. It at the uh, World Nine Ball Championship in Manila. Okay. He's just a youngster then, and uh, wait, what a talent! Yeah. Pro- almost like you could say a uh, young prodigy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Fast, fluent player. Doesn't mess around. See, see, reads the table very well. I've had some battles with him in the past. And you'll see the World Pool Series right there. And we have all the up-to-date brackets, live scoring. It's a great website. These guys did a, a great job of putting this together. Now look at that break. I don't think he got anything down. He didn't. No, but he, he parked hit. the cue ball. That yeah. was pretty. That yeah. was pretty snazzy. Look at that. The way he parked the cue ball. Right. Yeah. Very good break. Um, in the middle. But nothing went down. Nothing went down. Yeah. Also, uh, we have a Facebook page. Just look up Whirlpool Series on Facebook. We're posting uh, daily articles and interviews. Yeah, it really is a good uh, website, uh, Ted, qscore.com. Yeah, very good for tournament organizers and uh, players themselves, yeah. You can get your stats, your previous matches, you can get your whole tournaments for the year, your win percentage, and, uh, you know, very good features like that. And there's even, uh, uh, we've started to put uh, player profiles up there. Right, yeah. It even tells you which player you've played most, which I like. Who have you played? Mo- are you talking about, no, but not in your career, but I mean, since you made an account. Since I, I made mean, an account, yeah. So oh, okay. I have, I've only played one. Who one do you player. think you've played the most in your <laughs> career? The person I've played the most? Um, I've played Ralph Sukay a bunch of times. Yeah. I've played Neil's Fire in a, cup, a few times. Um. Well, you're talking about some big names there. Imran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we play on the Europe Tour. I've been playing on the Euro Tour for like 10 years, you know. And uh, we see each other very regularly. Now, and what about this? Uh, he, he's chosen uh, solids. He had an open table. Uh, we're looking at this uh, uh, pink four here. Yeah, so he's That goes into the side, I, I believe. Yeah, so he's going to take the five now, then the pink four, and then the leave the seven to last, and then the eight. When you're playing eight ball, you should always think about your last ball, which gives you the easiest route to get onto the eight. That's key when planning a run out for eight ball. So oftentimes, you're when you when when you see the spread after the break, you're actually working backwards. backwards. You're looking at the eight ball, exactly. then the maybe the nearby ball that will get you to the eight. Yeah, that's and called work the key ball. The key ball. The key and then ball work gets backwards. you on the last ball. Yeah, exactly, Ted. You work your way backwards. Yeah, that's exactly what he did, and he went uh, negotiated this rack very nicely. 
unfortunate dry break from Francisco. He hit him like King Kong and just came up dry. And it is a great rack. Yeah, pro probably the best regular triangle I've ever racked with. The balls rack really tight. Yeah, it's it's nice and solid. It's uh, it gives you um, markers at the back to make sure the rack is straight. Um, Ooh, yeah, he knocked in a stripe. So now he has to go for stripes, and I believe he has a nine ball inside. That's his only shot. I just want to remind everybody, this will be the last stream match of today. We will be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right here with these fine gentlemen in the booth. Are you talking about us? <laughs> I use that term loosely, my friend. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I figured. <laughs> It doesn't look to be if he can if he can make this ball on the side. He's got a lot of options here. But yeah, I mean, if he makes the ball on the side, you've got to make <laughs> that ball in the side. Otherwise, you know, you're giving the game away. It looked like he could have played the the ball in the side off the other ball to give you make it such a big pocket, you know. But uh, he chose to play it directly in the side pocket. Now Francisco has a pretty easy layout. The only problem I can see is maybe the two ball hasn't got a, an obvious pocket. He, oh no, and he missed it right back. He stood up as he uh, stroked through that and obviously Bustamante a bit uncomfortable out here on the table. Some uh, big time errors from the Filipino. Yeah, and uh, they're very far and few between, but um, we're all human, we do make errors. Well, just take, I mean, it's your first match in a, in a big tournament, you know, it's freezing cold outside, you come in here and uh, uh, you're put right on the TV table. You went through that in the last match, how's that? How do you? How was the adjustment? How were you able to make the adjustment to, you know, to get loose in your first match? Well, Ted, um, I'm pretty used to playing uh, TV matches because I play all the big tournaments. Uh, the conditions are not the same in any given tournament. You just have to adjust and uh, read the table and do your best from there. I mean, the, the better players, the best players in the world adjust to any kind of conditions they're given you know and uh yeah i must say these are great conditions so it wasn't really that much too too much hard work uh but for someone who hasn't played that much on tv or big tournaments this this arena can be quite uh, a daunting place you know there loads of people people watching you've got your live stream hundreds of thousands of people watching around the world <coughs> How do you think you would play, Ted? Well, not good. <laughs> I talk a good game, though. Yeah. Now, can he, I, I, he's looking at it, I don't think he can see this nine ball. The, can, the, he, the, can he get through that little might, might gap? Be a window. Um, I don't think he can get through it, but you are actually allowed two jump shots in one match. And if he wanted, he could. But he snook, but not if you snooker yourself. That's right, yeah. So he could not do a jump, sh oh, that's jump right. shot yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. It Only has to be off an opponent's, uh, opponent's play, safe. a safety. Yeah, yeah. So he's just jacking up to get a good hit on that ball. And he's given position on the two oh, ball. Oh, and, and that was the one ball you were mentioning. Problem ball. That yeah. was the problem ball, and he just gave it right to Bustamante. Yeah, that was a little bit careless uh, from Vilmos there uh, to snooker himself. And he had a easy table. So I would say that um, neither player is quite settled yet into the match. I'm sure it will get better.
Yeah, so he's clearing the, this side of the, the table, then he'll deal with the, the top half, and then uh, leave his last ball for the eight. He's got many options down there. I, I don't know if you heard, I asked Boosty in the interview before the match about, you know, whether he plays a lot of eight ball. You know, I know in the Philippines, these guys never play eight ball. It's just not a game you play right. in the Philippines. But, but back in the day when the U.S. military was at bases at Clark and Subic, uh, and uh, he's from the province where the bases were, and same with Efren. And they used to go. Oh, okay. They used to go clean the clock of these GIs. You would come in with three months back pay in their pockets, oh, brimming right. with U.S. dollars. And of course, the game was eight, eight ball, ball. And these guys would just come off the uh, the boat, or they'd get get off the plane from Vietnam or something back in the day, and uh -huh. uh, just ready to spend some cash and uh -huh. have a good time. And guys like uh, Efren and Boosty just made an absolute killing playing eight ball and, and it was, was it like a hijacking tables? was it on the big tables or yeah. probably bar tables? no right? no they oh. don't in the philippines they don't have bar tables oh in the philippines yeah, yeah they have yeah. uh they, they have big tables and they just uh, absolutely just hijacked them yeah so uh that was that's his experience playing eight ball and uh all right boosty gets one back there you know because you have to let's say you I mean you you can't just choose any ball. You have to go from one to two or whatever the next number ball is. So you can yeah. imagine yeah. how good they are. And most of the tables in the Philippines are absolute crap. Right. You know, yeah. so. <laughs> and the, there was you know, these outdoor tables in yeah. the humidity. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have them on the street, right? Yeah, yeah, that sort of stuff. And, you know, there's yeah. raggedy tables. And this is where these guys grew up playing. Uh-huh. It really is uh, the mecca of pool, isn't it? Well, it, you know, in... in in, in one sense, it, it used to be 10 years ago but uh, in the professional game, but it's all gone away. But there's still some of the best players in the world still still playing every you know night and day in all corners of the archipelago. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, Ted. Now, rumor has it that, you know, Francisco Bustamante has this unorthodox style. Um, his uh, loosey-goosey action, yeah. and, and he cues a, uh, away from his body. Someone told me, now correct me if I'm wrong, that he adopted this style just so he could hustle back in the day. So he would look like a bad player with a bad technique, and over the course of the years, he adopted that style, and it kind of got in, in, embedded in his uh, system, and uh, now he, he uses it. I'm not Is sure, but I haven't true? heard that story, but I do know that a lot of the Filipinos have this sort of loose, flowery stroke. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Look at that. I mean, That's the, the, the loose wrist. You don't see it that anywhere else. I mean, tell me another player who's got a stroke like that or a cue action, you know? I just think it, it sort of, I mean, the other Filipinos also don't have quite that pronounced of a loose stroke, but no. they're also, they also don't have, I don't think any Filipinos have rigid strokes. No, no. And... No. I think it's just fits their personality. You know, yeah, Filipinos yeah, are very yeah, laid back. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Nothing really bothers them. You could try to, I mean, you could start a chainsaw up in here, you know, yeah. two feet from, from Boosty right now, and he yeah. wouldn't even care. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. You've been to the Philippines. You yeah, know how it is, right? Been, they, been, they, yeah. You can't shark them. There's yeah. no way. No, no. They're, they're used to playing in noise and dust and no. heat. You certainly can't fade them. Yeah, I, I saw uh, Efren Reyes once in the Philippines. Uh, <coughs> he was playing in some dark, dingy pool room, and he had one fly on his nose, <laughs> one in his eye, <laughs> one in his ear, one uh, on his neck, and he was running out perfect. The flies <laughs> were just sat there, you know? Yeah. Like they're his friends. <laughs> and he was running out perfect. And you'll never hear guys like Francisco or the other Filipinos complain about the conditions or, or the tournament rules. No, they just get on with it. They get on with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I miss going to the Philippines. I uh, haven't been for a while. Well, if any of you guys out there uh, 
watching this broadcast right now, you want to improve your game tenfold in a couple of months, just go spend a few months in the Philippines and uh, take your take your licks in the uh, in the pool halls. Guys that look like the uh, assistant janitor. Yeah. Oh, that was a nice shot right there. That was a very nice shot. Guys who look like the assistant janitor will wipe the floor clean with you. Mm -hmm. They're uh, just absolute. There's so many great talents in that country. Oh, he, he got up again. Did you see that? He, he sort of, he's not comfortable no, he's today. No, not comfortable, no. I mean, <coughs> it was a very good uh, imagination the way he went for this uh, run out because that, the ball uh, he played off the other stripe before, not many people would have thought of that, uh, but he just missed uh, the easy ball. Well, so now this is looking uh, pretty good here. Yeah, Vilma should have uh, no real problems here. And there you see Francisco and uh, some of the action behind in the rest of the room here, just part of uh, Steinway Billiards. So I think he would take the the ten ball, or the the pink stripe, those two there. Then then use the nine to get position for the eleven. Now he can use nine ball to play position for the eleven in the top right hand corner pocket. Just like that. We used to have a lot of tournaments in the Philippines. Where have they all gone, Ted? Uh, at a professional level, the sport's dead. Yeah. Uh, there's still all these great players. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them have been forced to, because because there's no real money to be made, a lot of them have been forced to uh, go overseas. And you will find a lot, as you know, in the Middle East, you, you see a lot of Filipinos when you play over there, a lot of them showing up at the tournaments mm -hmm. in Qatar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and... Uh, in Kuwait, yeah, they exactly. they're as working as house pros right. in faraway places in places like Saudi and Kuwait. No, okay. So he's got a little funny on this stripe. Has to do something with the cue ball here to get position on the eight ball. He can't just roll this in. He he doesn't have the correct angle, so. Be interested to see what he does here. Can just draw it back like this, and yeah, it's okay. Not the easiest of eight balls. Could have been easier, better position on this, but uh, shouldn't be a problem. Oh, Ooh, what barely. Yeah. <laughs> so there you see the. Uh, the Rio Rack. Look at the way he parks that cue ball right in the middle of the table. Very nice break, yep. <coughs> so you got a little uh, lesson in that, that rack. It sort of comes apart. You can put it in your cue case and take yeah, it with you. Yeah, the Rio Rack is uh, actually, the abbreviation is uh, for Rack Your Own, right? Well, R-Y-O, Rack Your Own. And, uh, <coughs> yeah, it's a great... Great, great rack. I had no problems with it at all. So he's made, what did he make? A solid. A solid, yeah. So it's take what you make. He doesn't, in the, the WPA rules of eight ball, you would still have a choice. But in this case, 
You have to take what you make. Yeah, so have, having the choice it makes the game a lot more easier. Now you've got to take what you make. It's, uh, you've got your work cut out. <coughs> and don't forget, eight ball is a call shot game. And the reason you're not really seeing the guys call the shots is that you don't need to call obvious shots. But things like caroms, banks, safeties, you have to call. Now he has a problem because uh, the brown seven on the left-hand side of the table is uh, blocked up with the 11, so he has to break that out somehow. And he wants to deal with this sooner rather than later. And uh, <coughs> he broke it out. I'm not sure if it goes. It was a, a good effort. We'll soon find out if it goes. If he shoots it, it must go. Looks like he's not sure. Well, he's got he's got another option. You know, he's gonna perhaps uh, go for the three ball here. Mm -hmm. Deal with it later. Didn't we say talk about this before when you let your problems fester they tend to get worse yeah i think it might just go but he's leaving it for his last ball before the eight yeah, from the overhead angle here it, it doesn't look like it goes but it doesn't yeah he, he might be able to just hit the side of the long rail and it will creep in the pocket that's not a good shot he wanted to travel at least another six inches, ten inches. That's not a good shot. Now he's in trouble. Going for the bank in the side. Uh, misses it. Easy table for Boosty to claw one back. Well, easy on paper, but Boosty's had some problems so far. He's been standing up on some shots, not staying down, looking uncomfortable. Yeah, he needs to keep it a little bit more simple, Boosty, from what I've seen. Don't move your cue ball that much. Could play on the 11 now. Get that problem out of the way. These matches can be quite long, Ted. My, my match must have been the best part of two and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, do you feel that, you know, you were up 10-2. Did your concentration start to flag a little bit? And, and No, not really. I didn't really make any mistakes. It was just dry breaks that uh, enabled my opponent to come back. I didn't mess up, uh, miss a ball or mess up position in a rack. I was taking out all my racks, just dry breaks, and he was breaking and running out, which... Uh, enabled the big swing. So he's chosen his path. Let's see if he can execute it. Yeah, so I think he'll play the pink stripe next, then the nine ball, then 11 ball, then the 10 ball. 
There you go. He's looking for good position on the nine. Wants to be straight in. Now I can just roll this forward off the short rail and play the eight on the side. Well, he looks a lot more relaxed in this rack. Staying down with every shot. Four to three now in favor of Vilmos Foldesh. There's not just hit and hope, there is a lot of technique and years of breaking and practice. He's got a solid down, looks like he's gonna have two solids down. Yeah, and a pretty good lay of the land here. Should take this rack. No real problems here for Gusti. Just negotiating his pattern now. It's almost like criminal if uh, when Gusti breaks that if no balls go in, it's kind of really, <laughs> you know? Unfair. Unfair, yeah. We saw in our, our first match today Frenchman Vincent Fauquet was couldn't make some balls in the break, and he was so frustrated he started soft breaking. Oh, really? Ba basically, making a mess of the rack. Everything's clustered together in hopes of slugging, you know, it, get it, just getting it bogged down, and, and hopefully emerging the winner of that rack. Okay. Not yeah. the most fan-friendly style. No, no, that's actually what Jace, my opponent, did in the last ra uh, match I played. Yeah, I was way up, and he thought. He couldn't make a ball on the break, so he hit him softly. And uh, well, there was a, quite a few clusters, and it wasn't an easy run out. Uh, he didn't make a ball, but I actually <laughs> ran out. I actually ran out the rack, and uh, he was pretty sick. Well, that that's certainly not a way to win a tournament uh, no. of this caliber <laughs> with the, no. these kind of players no. and, you no. know, soft breaking like no. that. You're not going to go far, no. You gotta hit him like this guy here. You got a good chance to win the tournament. So Boosty getting in stroke now. Great break off, two solids down. He's already down to just one more and he's got that eight ball right next to the cue ball there, the black eight. Yeah, probably play it in the side pocket. Just draw back maybe Three or four inches. There you go. There you see the black gate down, tied at four. Tied at four, that's right, Ted, yeah, yeah. We got a match on our hands. Both players warming up, getting into their comfort zone, breaking well, seeing the patterns well. Sometimes you have uh, early match nerves. I think both of them got rid of those nerves now and uh, quite settled. You're watching the Whirlpool Series, our first event of this four tournament tour, the Molinari Players Championship. We're playing eight ball, 
single elimination. And the winner will receive 20,000 US dollars. He hit him good too, but no ball down, I think. Yeah. No ball down and a pretty easy lay of the land for solids. No real problems for solids. So if he chooses solids, I'm always interested to know what, what you would do with the ball in the pocket. Do you leave it there the until ball, the end? The ball in the pocket, I mean, that's a, a guarantee ball. Now, if you had um, problems on the table and you're choosing solids, say there was a problems on the table, you would tackle the problems and leave that for an insurance ball. Because you could try and break out a cluster and not have your desired position, but this one is always hanging, and it's kind of an insurance ball. So when you when you try to let's say break up a cluster, or if you mess up position, then you can always tackle that ball, yeah. take it down. Yeah, exactly. But right now, I don't think he has too much choice. And he's going to play the three onto the seven. He needs to find a way to get position on the one ball, which I think he might do now and draw back the cue ball. Or uh, oh, he can tackle that later. What, uh, did you try out the, the, the food here, Ted? Oh, yeah, it's great. Yeah? They do a great job here at okay. Steinway. Well, what do you recommend? Because uh, well, they got great I, salads. I uh, haven't they, my dinner yet. Well, yeah. they got, you know, the gyros, gyro, what as are, they say. What are gyros? That's a Greek uh, wrap. Okay, okay, interesting. What do you call it, like a doner kebab? All right, yeah. You know, yeah. with the bread and the uh -huh. wrap it up and everything. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So uh, everything is everything uh, has looked good here. There's all sorts of stuff coming out of that kitchen. But what's your favorite? That's what I want to know. Well, I haven't tried it. I've only been here one day. Okay. <laughs> well, two days now. Yeah. Your first time here, Ted? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I tell you, it's great to be in the United States for a big event. Exactly. You know, we've yeah. how many years been year after year going all over the yeah. world. And uh, and what better than the Big Apple as well? Yeah, that's right. We're due back here in April. It's another scheduled tournament as part of the WPS Tour in July and September. Funny enough, Darren Appleton lives in Allentown, Pennsylvania. That's my hometown. Oh, really? Born and raised there. Wow. How ironic. Yeah. And that's not too far from here, right? That's about two hours drive okay. once you yeah. get on the highway. Yeah. That's nothing for the the size of this country. Oh, yeah. All right, well, Boosty, definitely in stroke now. Yeah, so you can just draw back the cue ball a little bit, play the eight ball in the side. So Francisco Bustamante takes the lead. Cool. Exactly. The shootout rule because you come that far, if it's 12-12 in a race to 13, there you see that monster break from Jungo. But did anything drop? No, nothing dropped, I don't believe. And that, that seems pretty cruel. <laughs> so much power and control and nothing goes down. 
Yeah, but what a great rule. Yeah, I really like it, you know. Well, when it's when a match is tied, let's say race to 13, it's 12-12, I think it's unfair that one guy could break and run and the other guy doesn't even get a chance. And maybe the only reason he wins is because he won the lag. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the lag should necessarily determine yep. the uh, outcome of a match. And certainly the shootout doesn't cheapen the game. It's a very difficult, that's the most difficult shots in pool. Yeah. I would love to see that in, um, instituted in, in all pool tournaments. I think that's a great move here, the World Pool Series. And whose idea was that, Darren's? I believe so. Yeah, good good rule. Very, very good. Well, didn't you play on the um, yeah, I did. The winning World uh, Team Championship, World Team championship yeah, yeah, where you yeah. guys uh, had a, this amazing shootout. Who was that against? It was uh, against Philippines? China. Oh, China. China. Yeah. It went to like 25, 26. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nobody could get ahead by two. Or something. Sudden death went to 25, 26. We just kept on making the balls. And uh, the spot shot in that tournament was much harder. It wasn't uh, the eight ball on, it wasn't the nine ball on the spot. It was uh, the equivalent of the black spot on a snooker table. It was a very thin cut, but we just kept on making it. And so did China. And it just went to 25, 26. That was the, probably the greatest moment in my career, yeah. Well, I, I remember watching the uh, video of that at the time. The atmosphere yeah, was yeah. electric when you yeah. guys were trading back and forth. and. Mm -hmm. See that's the that's the kind of thing when you have that like the world team championship on yeah. the line uh -huh. and uh, be great you know, and, and you know everything riding on it and it comes down to this very difficult shootout. This, this is the kind of thing that will draw in fans. Exactly, and it's great for viewing as well. Great for the TV, you know. Who knows? Coming down at the. Uh, last matches the semis and the finals if we have a shootout that would really be exciting yeah i mean if you look at other sports as well like tennis it's not decided on one game if, it, if you're drawn if you're tied at 6-6 six, six, it goes to a tie break yeah so it's similar to that in a, in a way Almost. He's gone way too far. Yeah, he's I mean, he still has a shot on the seven down the, the rail, but um, by no means easy to pot the ball and to get position. He's got his work cut out, but uh, I fancy him to go close here. This table is quick, Ted. I just, just came off it. It's, it's very fast, but plays nice. Yeah, he made it. Very nice shot. Wow, great speed. Nice touch. Nice control. So I presume that the outside tables will not be as slick, as fast as this? No, obviously this is a new table they put together for the TV arena. And uh, this is playing a lot more uh, newer and slicker, as you say. Yeah. So Vilmos Foldesh has this eight ball to tie up the match once again. There it is. Five apiece. Q score. Q I keep score. making that mistake. Qscore.com. Qscore Click on the tournaments and you'll see WPS, the Whirlpool Series. Click that one and you'll see those brackets pop up in living color. And you'll be able to see... All the results from today and the current matches. This is our last session of the day on day one of this four-day event. That's where the live stream is as well, right? QScore.com? Or is it on the... On the website at Whirlpool Series. At Whirlpool Series. Yeah, of right. course you have to purchase that. Yeah. So nothing down here again. Big spread of the balls. Just looking at this problem in the corner here with the five and the pink stripe.
So a couple of little problems on the on the table, which uh, Boosty is trying to mastermind. So it's definitely solid. Uh, no, he well he has the option. No, I know, meaning break, meaning but, uh, his he, he, what do you he, think he, his he choice? Pro he probably will go for solids. Yeah, there seems to be more stripes in problematic positions than solids. Uh, he, so he could up to uh, take this orange out first. I thought he, he could play this rail first, but it's fine. Now he has a problem with the, the brown seven ball. Hasn't got an easy pocket to go to. And the blue two up top left. Blue two maybe Not sneaks by past the nine, but uh, we shall soon see. So he purposely played position on the, the blue two now. And he's nicely on it. He can just shoot it slightly into the long rail. Doesn't want to hit the nine ball. That's why he will slide this in off the jaw. Like that. Nice position. So now, not too many problems, and he has options here how to play this. So he'll probably take the three ball and leave the seven ball to last. Doesn't have to do any work with the cue ball because the eight is hanging over the side pocket. Now this shot to go up six five makes it and pretty good position on the seven. Should be six five boosty. Uh oh, I don't know what he's done there, but like he intended to play it in the corner, but has just come short of position because. He makes the eight, the cue ball's going right into the side pocket, and that was a very, very bad error. So, what's the medicine here? What's he got to do? Um, I'm not sure if he can make the eight in the corner and avoid the yeah, middle pocket. It seems like that middle pocket's just waiting to swallow up that cue ball. Oh, he just hit it off the point. Lovely shot. Nicely yeah. done. So he could avoid it, yeah. Yeah, you can bet on the Whirlpool series, for those of you that didn't know. Wow, so, okay. Yeah, so, so I beat him 6-0, yeah. yeah, for sure. You can ask him. Imran right Majid, sitting right here next to me, entertaining us with his great color commentary here. Beat the hottest player on the planet six straight sets. Yep. Hmm. It was about three weeks ago. He was in London for the Moscone Cup, and he came to practice with me. And uh, yeah, that's what happened. Well, you just blew your action around the world. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So pretty messed up table here. Mr. Money needs to negotiate. Yeah. 
He needs to find a ball to break out this cluster in the middle of the triangle. Well, that could be Nothing the really. shot after this one, mm, perhaps. Yeah. What I see is he could shoot this one he's going for now, then the stripe at the top of the table. I believe that's the 11 ball. Yeah. And then use the pink stripe to open up the cluster. Except you got to make the ball first. Yeah. It was a tough shot. How are these pockets playing? They said they cut them down to 4.25 inches. Yeah, pretty nippy, pretty nippy there. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're not big at all. No, you gotta bear it down. You gotta be precise. This coming from a man that can fire them right between the jaws without touching the rail. He <laughs> says they're tight. <laughs> I took this man out to New Jersey. How many years ago was that? Yeah, it was a long time long ago. Long time, 10 years ago, maybe more. More than know. 10 years ago, Al, yeah. To get in some action, and they tried to trap him up on a tight box, and he loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. Teddy Garahan, right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Teddy Garahan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does he still play, Al? Do you know? I heard he was a dealer out in Vegas, and then I heard he's opening a pool room Okay. There. So you might be able to own a pool room. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go and play him for uh, his pool room, yeah. <laughs> but the boy, that table was tight, I, I can remember. Yeah, that was in Common Triple Lombardo's ship. place. The name of the pool room was Crown Billiards on Crown the second Billiards. floor. That's the one, yeah. yeah. Pompton Lakes. Yeah, I mean, I come from a snooker background, and so does uh, the likes of Jason and Carl and Darren. We, we come from England, yeah. and snooker is the main game there, so... Um, you don't get much tighter than snooker tables, pockets, yeah. you know? I'll never forget. You jumped in the car with a bunch of strangers. Yeah. I was like, come on, we'll go find some action. Yeah. <laughs> and he just, we didn't know each other from Adam. Yeah. He just went. <laughs> the life of a pool player. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I was on the road in the, in the States right then, yeah. I think I stayed for six months, made, made some money and went back. Yeah. Voldesh. Did a nice job of opening up that mess of a rack there. <laughs> so can play the one, two in the side, then five, then eight in the side but needs to be straight on the two here to be straight on the five ball so you can roll it through and play the eight in the side that should be his plan played it well nice and straight Nice and straight again, so just roll this ball through and play the eight inside. To tie up the match again. Boy, this game could go down to the wire, Ted, like I said. Yeah, you get that feeling. Nobody wants to give an inch. Be nice to see a shootout, actually, on the TV. Yeah, it would. Yeah. Well, that's the kind of rack that will. Just before my my match, actually, I had to rack the balls in eight ball. I'm not a avid eight ball player, so I didn't know, and I was just told. And they actually gave me ow, oh, I think, gave me a template I could that's look correct. at, yeah. and I put it on the table. So I just memorized the template and went and racked the balls. So. Um, well, yeah, yeah, it's not done by number. It's done by stripes or solids. Stripes and solid, yeah. I just memorized a, a, a pattern and uh, just carried on doing it. There's actually two solids or two stripes that are together at the back of the rack and two stripes or two solids together at either the right or the left corner. Now the way they have it on the pattern is on the top right corner, two solids or stripes after the head ball.
and it is the WPA uh, racket format. And you can find that right on the website. Go to whirlpoolseries.com, and uh, you can find out everything about it and all the rules. Well, except the difference is that in WPA rules, you can hit the balls behind the, the head ball, the top ball. But you here you have to hit the yeah. top ball, the, yeah. the one which ball. is the one. Yeah, Darren came up with a great concept, you know, a little modified uh, rules here and there, uh, making the game a little more difficult, and it shows. Yeah, what, do you, what do you think? It shows up for sure, yeah. yeah. And they are all good rules. Well, I think in a world tournament where you have this talent, 35 countries coming over to participate, it has to be a little harder. Exactly. <laughs> Best players on the planet. Yeah. yeah. You've got to test them. And it was something that uh, Darren, uh, I, I believe it was months ago, about four months ago, he, he actually went on social media and, and wanted input from players and what do they think about the different rules and what they favor. So he didn't just take it upon himself. No, exactly, yeah. You know? <laughs> Two balls left for Vilmos Foldesh to okay. take a lead. Yeah, needs to be a little bit careful here. He wants position on the eight, has to decide which pocket he wants to play the eight ball in. He hasn't got ideal position on his last stripe. He should make it, but the key here is to get position. Does he, he play the short side of the eight? Needs to miss the orange. Yeah, play the short side and play in the same pocket. Nicely executed, good speed control. This will put him up 7-6. And he hasn't led since he was up 4-3 to three in East London. Uh, no, no. Central London, King's Cross. Oh, yeah, that's right, King's Cross. How uh -huh. many years have you been there? A uh, good uh, 20 years, yeah. You know, talking about the Derby, let us mention this uh, because Pat Fleming, uh, one of the pioneers of live streaming, will be down at Derby City Classic. That's AccuStats themselves, full production. Make sure to check out AccuStats.com. Big shout out to Pat Fleming and crew. I played the Derby once a couple of years ago. It's a really good tournament, you know. But I, we don't, we don't, we in Europe don't play one pocket and we don't really play bank pool, so it was uh, all new to me. But uh, I, I did pretty well in the nine ball. I think oh, I won uh, 12 straight matches. Got That's pretty, impressive. Pretty, pretty deep in the tournament, yeah. yeah beat some good players. So. You know, they don't play much bank pool up in Canada either, and Johnny Mora actually won that tournament, I think, last right, year or right, the year before. Right. Uh -huh. And now John Mora made a, uh, a statement that he's uh, retiring from pool. Quitting, yeah. What? And he's going back to school. He wants to be a professional DJ. That's what he wants to do. For real, yeah. Yeah, he's giving up. He put a big wow. po post on Facebook. Thank you to all the fans and uh, friends that have supported me over the years. I've had a fun time playing pool, but now I'm changing my career. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's surprising because yeah. John Moore Strong was uh, one of the rising young players over yeah. the last few years. Mm -hmm. Two years ago at the World Nine Ball, yeah. he, he uh, made it all the way to the quarterfinals, and uh, I believe, and, and was just thought that he he reminded me a little bit of uh, Jason Shaw last year, and I thought we'd be seeing Johnny in the uh, winner's circle, but uh, he, yeah, he was a, a couple steps below that in 2016. Apparently lost interest. Surprising, too, because his father's been a lifelong professional. And his exactly. mom. And Johnny also snapped off the Super Billiards Expo last year and won that. Wow. Yeah. But, you know, he, he's serious, and uh, we wish him the best of luck. There's my buddy, Jason. How's it going, Jason? What's up, guys? <laughs> Jason Shaw just, uh, in the out, booth. Cleaned out some Chinese yeah, guy back then. Easy money. Thousand. He had to. Um, he was shooting the spot shot from dead center spot in the middle of the table where the the, the bulk line is, yeah. and I had to shoot the spot shot from the corner of the pocket. From the corner, right in the jaws. Yeah, right in the jaws, and uh, oh, wow. 
uh, in two sets we played 500 a set in two sets i missed uh six shots <laughs> Wow, you eagle eye. You. <laughs> I butchered it every, every time, straight in the middle of the hole. He, I was like, oh, wow. Oh, wow. How's How did that, that go in? No. <laughs> he, 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 wanted to, he wanted to just slow roll it, and then he changed his mind on that shot, though. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. Seven apiece now. It's back yeah. and forth. That was it. He moved the cue ball yeah, over. Yeah, I like, I like where he moved the cue ball, though. You know that? The ball's open pretty good there. Yeah, very good. Stri no. Um, no, he's on the solid. Yeah, he'll be on the solids. Solids are sevens. Seven might go in the in the side though. Might I think the seven in. goes in the side too. If, might be if tricky, but if it, if it doesn't, then he can. Uh, if it doesn't, he could uh, play the the one just now and try and go over that way and try and come between the ten and the eleven. You know. Yeah. Also, the only only shot I see for the two ball to go anywhere is playing the two off the 14 in the side. You know? Can't see the two going anywhere else. Two and doesn't it, go anywhere else. And e even that shot going off the 14 is still a little bit tricky, tricky but yeah. it is possible, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, if he if yeah, he yeah. if he pots the three ball as his last, second last ball, yeah. and then just gets out, because he only has to do is stop the cue ball yeah. for the eight. You might be able to pot the the one here and pot the five. Pot the five uh, and nudge out the two. Yeah, I was yeah. thinking that, but he's got to get a real good angle here because it's, yeah. um, it looks tight going past the 15. Yeah, there's a little margin for error here. Not much margin for error. That's probably what I would do. Yeah, open it up with the five, try and get low on the five. Yeah, just a little bit of top right hand English. Yeah. yeah. But obviously he's got a different route. Yeah, he, oh, he's perfect. Oh, it goes. Oh, it goes. Yeah, that it was flies a good in. shot. It flies in. So maybe, maybe he's going to draw back here. Maybe if he could pinch this a little bit, get get what get back towards this ball over here and split it. The, the two might actually go in this corner, you know. Nah, nah? I don't think so. When you okay. looked at that um, top screen, it didn't look like it. See. Maybe it goes into that corner. Um, possibly. Nope. It, He's playing. He's gonna wow. play. He's gonna play it off the 14. I can see him playing it off the really? 14. Yep. Yeah, he's got to hit it hard into the 14. Well, you know what? He just he just bent down like he was gonna hit it in the top corner, like it passes. But from our angle, it doesn't look like yeah, two passes. I think he's gonna play it off the 14, guys. Can be a little bit deceiving from. Yeah, uh, he's playing it. Because the 14 is going to come down towards the left-hand side of the table. It's not going to... Oh, he's going to try and pot the five. Where's he going? It with? might go in the top pocket. It didn't look like it went no, there, Jim. No, it's deceiving from this angle, you know. He can just draw this back. Or it looks like he's stunning it. Yeah. It he didn't really go. hit that. No. He sort of pulled out it a little bit. I'm yeah, not sure pass. why. I'm not sure why he stunned it. He's just a little. Yeah, draw. I would have just played a little draw top shot. right, just off the rail, a little bit of spin. Or well, even draw it back, you know. This is really tricky now because it's just slightly goes. Oh, he made it! Great mm, shot. Made it. Yeah, great shot. Wow, that was a great shot. Nicely done. Is he a shoot this in the corner? Yeah. Nice out. Yeah, that was a nice out. Yep, nice up. And he takes the lead. Hey, Teddy, you there? Oh, yeah. Oh, we're back. We Man. are back. Bit of an issue with the rack, as uh, Upstate Al was <laughs> mentioning. Bustamante seemed to be having a little bit of a problem with the uh, rack your own, the Rio rack. Yeah, the very first problem that I saw all day long. And, and again, I, I, I go back to it, and I've picked it up where you could hardly fit your fingers in the back of that rack to tighten it up. 
And that's how tight it makes the ball. So maybe Boosie's kind of uncomfortable with that, not used to it. But it's a really great rack. All right, here we go. It's 8-7 in favor of Vilmos Foldesh. has been back and forth, nip and tuck all the way. And Boosty on the stripes. You, you know what I did notice, and probably a few other people noticed it. I don't know if you noticed it, Ted, but, you know, Bustamante has that locomotive stroke, right? We all know the Filipino has that locomotive stroke. And not only that, they have the long bridge, right? Take a look at his opponent's bridge when he gets down. He might be a mix of hungry and Filipino. <laughs> He's got that long 18 to 20 inch bridge. The race to 13, alternate break. Nope, came up short on that one. And the one problem ball for Vilmos will be the orange five in the top right-hand corner. He's got a couple options. You know, he can play off the one to get to the short side or maybe break out the 14. Or he can play with the three, depending on the angle that he gets. I'm sure the seven will be cleared before the three. Well, the largest lead he's had, either player's had. Vilmos was up three to one, four to two. And since then, nobody's been able to get more than one clear. Back and forth match. So two real talented players too. And we'd like to welcome Nick Varner into the booth. Nick, what you been doing? Having a rest? Uh, yeah, a little Signing bit. Signing some autographs. Yeah, yeah. Just been visiting with uh, uh, a lot of folks here in New York City. <laughs> so, uh, Vilmos now. Nick, uh, get back up to speed here. He's on the solids, and he's got this uh, one issue up here at the top right-hand corner with that that orange five ball. Now he's looking at that. He's looking at that right now to clear out that stripe. Well, that's uh, that's what you call a little hard to do. Uh, that was he a narrow it. opening. How does he get that five ball out of there, Nick? Well, I think he was trying to get that. Uh, get that stripe out of the way. Well, he was trying to clip, I think, the 14 and open up that hole. He does could he, get the top side of the 14. Does he, he grazed it. Does he cross bank this and go for it and knock it out? Yeah, he might. Yeah, he might as well fade. Watch the stroke. Him. Watch the bridge hand. Well, this time he didn't do it. So of course. Not as long as he did the last first time I saw him. Oh, he hit that ever so slow. It came long. What is the score? Eight to seven in favor of Vilmos Foldes. Oh, wow. He's been nip and tuck all the way. Boy, he's hanging in there pretty tough, isn't he? Yeah, it's been a solid match so far. No second chances in this tournament. No, single <laughs> elimination. Although... If you lose in the early round matches, you can join uh, a challenge tournament. It's a separate tournament. It offers the players a chance to earn some money. $5,000 first prize. Wow. Wow. This tournament, $20,000 first prize. I think it's 8500 for second, if I'm not mistaken. Nice piece of change. I would say. Not bad for a country boy.
think we're going to start telling some pool stories here, Ted. I know you got a lot of them. Oh, I don't, well, not compared to this guy. <laughs> well, he can't. You he, were talking about that chunk of change. I, I, I just, I love the one you told me yesterday, Nick, about when you were a college student at Purdue University and you, you were able to pay your tuition in about one day for, for the whole whole four years, right? For, well, but how much? Tell them how much. The, tell them how much tuition was. Yeah, this back uh, then for a year. Yeah, it was uh, three hundred and thirty. <laughs> I imagine today it's about ten or twelve thousand. That's not even one credit hour. <laughs> I know because I have a daughter at Ohio State <laughs> right now. Another Big Ten school. Yeah. Yeah. Boilermakers never never beat Ohio State in football, pal. Sorry. Or Michigan. I don't know. They won the Rose Bowl when I was a freshman. They did? Yes, they did. We had Bob Greasy as a quarterback. Oh. <laughs> One of the greats of all time. Yeah, I was a freshman. We went to the Rose Bowl. He was a senior, and he uh, he got the win. Well, now that's not going to count. Uh, it's called pocket, and the ball actually come off the point of the opposite side pocket. So, yeah, it's a call shot game. This is not nine ball where it, it would have counted. So now Vilmos back onto the solids. Any ideas, uh, Nick, for that orange five up at the top there? Well, he's got a good shot here. Uh, oh, he wow. keeps He keeps going after it. He didn't even really get close. Uh, uh, I thought that was, uh, man, he had the perfect angle. But, boy, he kind of shot that pretty hasty tasty. Uh, uh, you know, I believe, uh, I mean, he's got these balls hanging. He can't hardly get out of position. All he's got to do is move it up table and get it where it goes in one of these other uh, four pockets. But, uh, wow, he need to hit the cue ball a little lower. Uh, well, I yeah, thought he, he didn't I, really treat that with much respect there. Uh, he I, act like nothing could go wrong. I thought he would take out that seven a long time ago, but... Left it in there for some kind of defense, and it could come back to bite you. You leave it in there long enough. If he's thinking about banking this five ball towards the seven, that's another question. Boy, I don't understand this. Uh, I'm going to learn something here, Ted. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, not such a bad play. He evidently called that seven. But... Uh, he might as well forfeit from here. <laughs> he might kick it. <laughs> this is the triple nickel Lindsay right here. He might just kick this right well, in. Well, I shouldn't say that. He's got a long rail bank on the five, or he could kick Yeah. and call uh, the pink ball. I don't like kicking at it. I think he's there's no safety there. He's got the 14 up there, his opponent hanging in the pocket. He's actually got an easy kick to make the pink. He can go underneath, kiss a 10, push the four in, but I don't know. I think he just pointed to that. You're not going to, I don't know how you get shape there, but. Uh, well, the 10's going to ticky out if he plays that ticky, but he's just got to hit that five right. He can't well, hit the 10 ball goes, first. Yeah, if he, yeah, he can. Oh, you can? He can come off the second ray. Oh. You can't hit the opponent's no, ball. He's, I don't know what he's doing to make that ball shooting this way. I thought he was kicking. Uh, See, he's, he's playing a safe, but trying to hide behind the eight so the 14 can't make it in. Oh, look at what he oh, did. Oh, wow. He's the only one that saw it up. Well, I've seen him slice uh, two or three of these down the rail in this match. Uh, he's made some incredible hard shots. Yeah, uh, he's got a good I was, touch. I was watching over there, Ted, and uh, he, he's a shot maker. That was a clever shot. This is no gimme. Well, you got to cut it up in the corner. There's no e easy way here. You just. Uh, What's it, this is as hard a shot as you'll see, isn't it, on a pool table? Going down table like this? Well, it may not be the hardest, but it's plenty hard enough, I tell you <laughs> that. Wow. 
Wow, he hit that ball so good. But mm, just just bare. got it out. I thought he had made it when he hit yeah. it, but just got a little hair outside. Well, this match is getting ready to be tied up. Tied up. The uh, veteran is going to make him pay here. As he has done to so many opponents <laughs> in the past. How's your record against Bustamante over the years? Uh, well, I beat him the last time we played. I played in that big tournament they had in Galveston. They had a big tournament in 2009. And, uh, and uh, it was eight ball. Well, they had two. They had an eight ball and I think a nine ball. And then the eight ball I played him. I think I played every Filipino in the tournament. I played that uh, <laughs> and beat them all. I played that uh, Boosty and uh, I played. Oh, I never can think of this guy's name. Dennis Ocolo, Lee Van. Lee Van, okay. Lee Van. I always for Lee Van Cortiza. I never can remember his name. And uh, I remember against him, I had to make, I had to play the cue ball froze on the rail and shoot the eight all the way up table because that's the only place uh, you hate to run out and uh, know you're going to have to shoot the eight ball. <laughs> and you made it. Yeah. Well, as uh, Nick said, we are tied at eight apiece. <laughs> <laughs> and I yeah. asked one guy, I said, boy, this is kind of strange. I said, uh, you know, in America, they applaud for Ephraim all the time. And, uh, uh, and uh, he said they're stunned. I never, seen, never saw him lose before. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. When, I remember when Ephraim was at his uh, height, boy, when he would lose, they would make every excuse in the book the Filipino fans. You know, it never was the other guy uh, who maybe just played better. It was uh, for some other reason. Like in conspiracy theories and all that. They, they could not accept that he would lose. Well, I guess I must have hypnotized the audience. <laughs> <laughs> So full dash down on the solids. Well, he made two of them there and he took care of one major problem. Does that three go? Can he make a good hit? And, uh, or is that the five, the five? Can he make the five there uh, with a good hit? I can't uh, really tell from here. It looks pretty tight. Well, first it's on to the blue two. Oh yeah, I'm, I think that orange five goes. That, that really looks like it goes. That looks to be the key ball. No, it didn't. I'll tell mm. you what, he hit the lottery with that one now. Wow, what control that was. Uh, he made that look easy. It's funny, a lot of times from these angles, it. It looks like it doesn't go, and it does. I mean, you really have to be down on the table to see exactly if it goes. Tell you what, he's falling in a bad position here. Uh, he got a little tasty, tasty, a little careless there, really. Uh, <clears throat> well, I guess he was afraid that if he goes too high, he can't come. He's come down table. He's, if he runs into the ten, he can't get back up table. And he might have to soft spin this in what loaded up with reverse. No, he's going to swing around the horn. Yeah, I like that choice a little better. Makes pocketing that ball way, way easier. But he made a good shot there, and that looks like he's going to play that eight in the side. 
And he maintains, uh, he gets back in the lead, uh, which is a scene of, uh, I'll never forget the Big Apple Manhattan. Uh, won my first world title in uh, the, uh, Manhattan at the Roosevelt Hotel around Midtown. And uh, who did you beat? I beat Mike Siegel in the finals. So no, no balls down. He uh, come up dry. Yeah. It's amazing how he breaks the ball so hard and nothing goes down. You know, he's got uh, one ball. Everything else looks pretty easy here except that one ball, right? One, at least a solid. And I'm not sure he can even make a stripe, so he, I don't think he has uh, any choice here. But uh, that ball right up by the nine ball, right between the sides, that one could be a little hard to get to. But he does have three balls here where he could uh, maybe get it for the corner uh, off one of them and save one as an out ball. And then uh, the seventh's close where he, he, he could maybe move 14 pretty easy. Uh, that I don't think is going to be much of a problem. But that one ball, it's going to be interesting to see how he goes about getting to that ball. It's going to be very, very interesting. Now you're talking about the uh, orange five? Yes. Right in the middle of the table. He's going forward. He may be trying to go over to the right and get it for this uh, lower left corner. I like that. I like that. If it goes, I'm not sure it goes. Uh, I think he might have been trying to get on one of these other balls. Uh, I don't know if it goes by the left, and I can't tell. He's looking pretty hard at it. It must be uh, to see if it goes. And, We're getting late in the match here. We're playing a race to 13. The score is 9-8, and uh, Velmas has a chance here to uh, pull two ahead. This is a good time to extend your lead at this stage of the match, and uh, he pumped that ball in. And uh, tell you what, he almost has to take out that ball on the next shot by playing it in that upper left-hand corner. I'm not sure he's gonna get a real good chance after this. Uh, uh, he cuts his six in, and I can't tell quite how thin he is on this ball. He, he might have to hit this with a lot of low reverse to help kill it. Center ball might take him too far, but looks like he might be hitting it with center ball. Oh, he's going back and forth. And, uh, well, he Tell you what, uh, I tell you what he's liable to have to do here. I don't think it's any good to play the five now. I think he may have to uh, play the pink, and I think he may have to play the seven and break out the 14 and eight and draw back to that rail and play that uh, five ball last. I, I don't see. I don't see how he can run out if he takes that ball. I guess if he fell perfectly straight and drew back and put that uh, cue ball, landed it on a dime, I guess he could get there. But uh, I tell you what, here's another option. He could play the seven now, break him up, and slide underneath the four. That might even be better, huh? Well, could the also, does the five ball go up in the corner? where yeah. The corner where he's standing? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I like this. Uh, this is another option, but he may have an angle, but I think he's so full that he's going to have trouble getting far enough to the right. He can go to the right, but he, maybe he'll play it off the nine here and try to get back over by that third diamond. He might be able to get over there. 
or maybe even a little lower, but boy, I think you're going to see a hard, he's going to have to hit this one close to warp speed. <laughs> of course, maybe he has more angle. Uh, I think he might have more angle than it looks like from where I'm sitting. He hit that to well, he, he didn't hit. He didn't even get close. Ball in hand. Oh, it's a foul. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was a big turn of events in this match. An opportunity for Velmas to go ahead 10 8. And, uh, Seemed a bit confused there on how to deal with that five ball. Well, I remember I mentioned that before you ever pocketed the first ball after the break. I said the key yeah. ball is going to be that ball between getting that out. It's yeah. going to be very important. As much as possible, Nick, it seems like the, the players at this level, they, they want to get rid of those problems as soon as possible on the table. Don't wait until the end. No. No. No, I like if I'm going to get bad news, I'd rather get it early. <laughs> <laughs> and he kept putting that shot off. He did have chances to take it on, but kept putting it off, and it cost him. And uh, now he's given ball in hand to the legend. Well, that would have been my number one priority there. And... Uh, Tell you what, though, if he kicks that ball in <laughs> pretty softly, he could actually win this game. But Boosty fell so bad on that 14 when he broke it out. It he had a pretty tough shot on the 14. But there's actually now you think Boosty's a huge uh, favorite here, right? But uh, we'll see what happens after this kick. Oh. Well, he is a huge favorite now. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's what the old saying goes, Ted. Uh, uh, never underestimate the value of a safety. <laughs> the second ball. It was a game-winning safety this time. A second ball in hand. For Bustamante. He's uh, got to get out here. Well, he will. Well, it looks like it's uh, going to be 9 9. We're going to play in a race to 13 here. And uh, this tournament is single elimination, so you get one barrel and that's it. So uh, when you lose in this tournament, you're out of biz when you lose. Well, there is a challenge tournament you can enter after losing here. Different tournament though, lesser prize money. This gives players a chance to earn some dough. So two balls for now he has to be a little Bustamante. Oh, no, he can reach it from the side. I was going to say if he had to reach it from the end, it'd be a long stretch, and uh, he's sure to be close to that five ball up there. Okay, we're playing a race to four for the cheese now. Well, I'll <coughs> reserve my opinion, Ted, until I see how one of them uh, works. I haven't seen one work yet. Well, he. Otherwise, I just have to take your word. You for take it. my word for it. Well, don't trust me. I, you know. And here's Bustamante. A big break off, monster break from full desk, but nothing down. So Busti has his choice of solids or stripes when nothing goes down. I think he may elect to play this 12 ball in that corner pocket and pick stripes. Uh, 
but it's uh, there's not much difference between stripes and solids here. Uh, I mean, the two ball is a lot easier shot. Yeah, he's going the other way. He's going with the uh, solids. Well, he needs to slow down a little. Oh, he don't have to, but boy, he fell a little. He kind of fell out in the middle of everything here. Uh, he wanted to fall a little fuller on that uh, five ball for the upper corner. He may even have to play it. Uh, uh, Boy, he don't. Uh, he's looking up table. Man, I'm not sure the five's not an easier shot, but it looks like he sees one up where he likes better. Is he playing the six here? I think he is. That was a great pressure shot there. That uh, if he don't miss that one, he don't. If he misses that one, he figured to lose, but uh, he's got a chance to pull back on top. Uh, I wouldn't be surprising the way this match has gone. It's just been back and forth. I don't know about you folks out there, but I can tell you one thing. What a pleasure having Ted Lerner and uh, Nick Vaughn in the booth and many other guest commentators. Uh, Darren Appleton does things 110%. He brought in the best. So I want to personally thank you guys. You're too kind, Al. Yeah. You too kind. Too right. kind. <laughs> no, I mean that. Would you repeat that, Al? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let me have another drink. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. <laughs> I get loose. <laughs> I thought those were Cokes that the lady was delivering. I didn't know there was something in there. <laughs> oh, it's all well, fun. They're, they're long days, Al. It's we all understand. fun, folks. Uh, I don't promote drinking. I don't drink. But uh, we can mention it. He's a hair straight here, and uh, I think he can punch this just a little bit, just to have enough angle. Thing is, he's gonna have to play the speed to go back and forth, because the eight doesn't appear to go by that 15 ball, does it? Yeah, I can't tell from here, but it certainly looks like it possibly is blocking part of that pocket. Now he's gonna force this over. It looks like. Tell you what, he's taking no prisoner. That showed a lot of uh, that showed a lot of heart there. A lot of guys, they would have took a thinner angle, like well, what uh, we kind of thought he was going to do, and uh, then go back and forth. But uh, he pured that ball in that corner, and these pockets are small. These are four and a quarter inches, and uh, that's why I say it uh, took a, a lot of guts to play it that way. You may need earplugs when he breaks. Well, look at this. Wow, he hit that break so good, but no cigar. Uh, wow. Cracked him pretty good, didn't he? Yeah, I love the way he hit him, but man. Uh, Just a lot of noise. Yeah. Just a just a loud noise. You called it out. And uh, wow, these balls are spread out so good. Uh, I don't think I think uh, I think you could pick either group here. And run out. Uh, I kind of like shooting the solids though. Well, like you said, uh, the, the choice is there. He likes the solids also. Now, are you picking the solids because the seven ball is that far away from the eight ball, really not clustered up too close? Or what is your reason for picking the solids here? I like because uh, most of the solids are down here closer to the eight. I, 
Okay. The bottom half of the table. Yeah, I like it because they're on the same end of uh, the table that the uh, eight balls on and uh, a good way to finish here would be five, three, seven or three, seven. I mean, stop, stop. Yeah, I like the seven as the uh, key ball there. But I guess any one of them will do it. Yeah, I think he'll make sharp work of this rack. Now he does have a little problem with the reach here. Uh, uh, he's looking for the bridge. He's got a small window to deal with here too if he wants to take that five out first. You know what I mean? He's got that little window. It's really not an Anderson Bay window between that seven and nine. You might see him take the three ball. I don't know, Nick. What do you think? Well, I tell you what, uh, he's going to have a hard time getting where he needs to get here. Uh, he's going to have to probably play that five in the corner. Yeah, he's going to have to shoot it, and he needs to draw back four or five inches, so he's going to have to hit a little speed on it. So... Uh, if I was sitting in the chair now, I'm thinking, boy, maybe I, I mean, uh, the odds aren't too good that you would get another shot here, but uh, he'd he's, rather be shooting it in the side. You've got to be real careful. There's a lot of traffic to deal with here. Well, he's got to get back close to straight in, and he needs to be off. Yeah. Wow. That was on his mind, let me tell you. Tell you what, I he thought he was playing in the side pocket, then try to hold up a reverse and then come back down for the three ball. No, I don't like that. I don't like going that far with the cue ball the way these two other two balls are. Because even if you get down past the side, if you go too far, you got to go back up table again. Good point. Wow, I'm a little amazed there. I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't bet. I would have bet 500 he got out that wreck. Ted Lerner will be back in a minute. He's doing a little interview in the back room. He'll be back in probably by the time this rack finishes. He'll be back in. I look for him to get rid of these three on this end and, <clears throat> and then take that ball up by the side. I tell you what, he does have to be uh, a little careful here. It's, they're not... Uh, you know, you look, they're all spread out. You think, oh, these are laying easy, but uh, they don't go in all the pockets. Uh, right. That seven ball is huge. Yeah, it is. Uh, well, I think Boosie uh, looks like he's going to work the top half and then come down for the lower half. See if he comes down on that side of the table if that nine ball goes in the opposite pocket. From this angle, it doesn't appear to go. It seems like it only goes into the other corner pocket, which would be the right bottom corner. His speed needs to be pretty good here, Al. He, uh, he just can't uh, fall any place down here. He, he needs to hit this and get a pretty good angle on one of these two stripes below the eight. Yeah. Or to look, the body language of Boosty uh, tells me that he's super straight. Yeah, I knew this. Uh, like I said, he just couldn't fall any place down here. Uh, I'm not saying that he won't get out from here, but this is uh, less than ideal. Right, right. It makes the shot a little more difficult when you got to jack up and drew, screw this cue ball back in with a draw shot. It makes it a little more difficult. He, he took a look around the table to see if that 13 ball had any other pocket. I think the only other pocket it might have would be the upper corner pocket on the left-hand side, if any. 
Well, if he went forward with it, he's going to have to cut it a lot. He's not going to be able to fall straight in for that corner. He's going to have a pretty strong angle. Uh, uh, yeah, he's looking at the side pocket now for that 13 ball. Yeah. And then he's got a small window for the nine. You might see him bounce up right to the other side of this 13 instead of slow rolling it too. He's in a slow roll. Well, that ball must go on the side here. Uh, wouldn't you prefer to the corner pocket here instead of playing it into the side though? Yeah. That's yeah, steep angle. I think he side. has to I think he has to play it in the corner to get position on the 13 for the side. I would think he just punch it up there. Never hit a rail. Oh wow. I tell you what, he's really got a tough out here. Uh, man alive, this is tough. He may even, wow. He's in a tough spot here. That's where that seven ball became big. Right there. Yeah, I think after looking, of course, hindsight's always 20-20, but uh, I think there he might have, uh, should have come down here and dealt with the balls down here and left those up table, maybe played one to get down table, but. Uh, right, and went know, back and forth, sort of say. Yeah, these three stripes down here were really laying pretty brutal. And I think when he had an angle, he could have bounced off the side rail and come up and took that nine out and then that opens. Everything. He would have had options to play with. Well, yeah, if he left <laughs> a couple of balls up there, he could have had outs to play with to get back in line. I tell you what, he's really in a, he, uh, yeah. he's uh He's stuck in a rut and his tires are turning, but he can't get out of the hole. And he's leading this match 10-9. It looked like he was going to have a two-game lead, but he's liable to end up tied here if he don't get these two down. Uh, he's maybe going to try to go three rails here. Straight in the corner pocket where he had it. And he has the window between the three and the seven ball for a shot in the same pocket with the eight. Well, he needed to be just a little higher, I think. He was going to try to fall the same angle, but I think he thought he would be three or four feet higher. And and uh, this is pressure shot here. This is he played perfect speed to get there, though. And what confidence oh, that he splits the pocket. Wow. wow. Now, that's not a loss. That eight ball is going to come up in a hole, isn't it? It'll come up in spot and then it's ball in hand. Velmos. Well, I can't answer I'm pretty that sure. question. Okay, 10-10, and Velma is uh, getting ready to uh, hit the break. Oh, he scratched on the break. Yeah, Boosty's pretty fortunate there, and Velma, he caught a little bit of a bad row there. That guy kissed like six or seven feet in, in this corner, you know what I mean? It was above the side and got kissed all the way down in this lower right corner. So sometimes this sport can be uh, be so unlucky. It can also be lucky too. Yeah, I prefer the the ladder. <laughs> I think he has to take the solids here. Man, I think he almost has to get started with the uh, three ball, or four ball, I guess. Four ball on that uh, right rail up to the side. Well, he's well, off the break. He cannot hit that ball. He's got to go behind the line. Oh, it must be, is it the and he has three to hit ball? No, what ball? The five, that's the five, orange five. Okay. That's the one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you what, the two and the five are uh, laying a little tricky. Wonder if he's going to try to come across and fall in the middle there where he can cut the two into the seven. No, he went down the table. 
This is an important shot here. Uh, <clears throat> if this don't go good, he might not win this game. He's got a few issues at the, on this table. Yeah, I guess he's going to try to go up and hit that one red stripe. No, he decided to hit it firm. He's still got a big, big problem here. And uh, this ball's pretty tough on the side. That's pretty thin. The sides are pretty tough here on these tables. And the corners are about four and a quarter. It's hard to play position here. Yeah, he's going with the uh, green six in the side. Here it comes. He needs to hit the eight. Wow. Nicely done. What a fantastic shot. Wow, that's just precision. And he comes out with a shot. And that just, Nick, that just opens up the whole table. I mean, a minute ago, there was like two two clusters there. Yeah, that was a uh, great execution. I think that comes from rotation now. That's, that's it. That's it. <coughs> and I've been uh, telling people that the Filipinos, they don't play eight ball, but they do play rotation. The thing is, you know, in rotation, you have to go to the next numbered ball. So you really got to be precise with your uh, cue ball movement. I, I, I think I lost track. Moving through all that traffic. I think that's where the uh, Filipinos have an advantage. Yeah, I think Boosty's laboring a little bit here. Well, it's been a long match. It's been three hours so far three hours yep we started at 8 30 it's 11 30 and uh well it's just a race to three but at this pace the finish line isn't even in sight yet yeah this could go another five games <laughs> and then the and then the shootout possibly yeah. That's right. The most it can go is four four games. <clears throat> if they each win two, that's as far as it can go to the shootout. Now, we haven't seen that uh, on the streaming table yet. Uh, I tell you what, this is a tough, tough position shot. In fact, if... Uh, He's liable to shoot the five right now. That's how tough it is to get on the five. I, I don't think he can get any better if he plays position. I think that if he went from the three to here, I think it'd be a phenomenal position. So he's going to go ahead and play it. I tell you what, even this is not so hot. Well, he's, he's going to have to bring it back out for the uh, eight ball. He's uh, not taking much time looking at it, so. That was really a good shot there. He really <clears throat> got a good shot on this eight. Oh. He did all the dirty work. Cleaned up the table, and now he's left it wide open for Foldish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's the that's the one thing I hate about eight ball is that's the one weakness of the game. I think is the fact that. Uh, he had to make a lot of good shots to get out where now he's removed all the obstacles. And uh, it's like uh, 
Vilmos gets to pick up all the gravy. <laughs> In Kentucky, don't they call this a turkey shoot? <laughs> <laughs> or it's picking up the gravy. Yeah, it's... Uh, Sometimes he who goes first loses in this game. Eight ball sometimes. Yeah. And this is a case right here. You know, I think I'd leave this 10. I think I'd finish. <clears throat> I think I'd finish with uh, that 11 10. Well, now he could finish uh, 11, 10, 15. But I like getting a nine out of there, and I like to get the other ball that he just made plus this one out of the, off the table. I kind of like saving the blue stripe down. Here's my last ball. See, I just slide over a couple inches off this uh, nine and then roll the 11 in then play the 15. and then play the 10 last. That's the pattern I like here. You see, what do you think, Ted? Sounds good to me, Nick. I, tr I trust you. Yeah. No, I don't like this. I don't like this. But he's going to do exactly what you said not to do. <clears throat> this don't have to, especially if he takes a 15. My goodness. This is not too bad, though, here. I guess this is not too bad. I guess that's all right. I like the other way because the shots were going to be shorter. Well, I certainly... Uh, like this finish for now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's, uh, the game can turn on the head of a pin. Wow. Boosty was looking to go up 11 9, one away from the hill. Now he's going to be down 11 10. Remember, it's single elimination here at the Molinari Players Championship. Great promotion. Look at this center. Look at these balls in the center. Wow. Nothing down. It's amazing you can hit them that hard and nothing drops. Yeah, and look at those uh, five balls there in the center uh, kind of clustered. Uh, they didn't open very well either, huh? Yeah, is that because uh, like it didn't hit it solid or maybe it wasn't racked tight? He, he was having issues racking the ball. I think maybe the cue ball got a little too high up in the air maybe. Uh, and uh, when he hit the head ball, I think it, it hit a little too high on that head ball. and It kind of killed his action a little bit. I think it's more where he hit the cue ball. <clears throat> I can't tell if that green stripe uh, goes by these balls, but uh, One thing for sure, you don't have to get out here. These uh, balls uh, laying certainly a little tricky. That nine is tucked in where it's going to have to be moved. And uh, I wonder if that, I think the 14 goes by the seven. But then here's the problem. How do you get the nine out of there and the eight? 
Maybe he can play the 14, come down for the low stripe here in the same pocket and then cut it in the pocket and then send maybe the 11 into those balls to open them up. What do you, huh? Well, Al, what do you think? Oh, yeah, I'm watching this game. Let me tell you, he's in a lot of trouble. He's really in a lot of trouble here. I like them taking the solid balls, even though they don't look as good as the stripes, but with all the cluster of stripe balls around there, at least he has that 13 to break open that eight ball in the five. Maybe that nine went. 48 and uh, four. Uh, he's absolutely hooked himself here. And uh, uh, boy, he's in a tough spot to make a hit here. He hates to go underneath and hit it hard enough to get a ball to the rail, two rails, because yeah, he's he needs opening up the stack and uh, the side pocket's in the way to kick soft and play safe. <laughs> I think what he wants to do is kick the two lower stripe balls with just the right speed to play safe behind the stack at the lower rail on your monitor. It'll kind of play a safe, but the speed that he has to hit the cue ball to the object ball might leak out and leave a solid shot for Boosty. Well, I think the side pocket, though, is in the way. I think. Yeah, if, yeah, you see it, right? I think if he hits the <laughs> shard of the point there, yeah. I don't think he can uh, get down low enough to do that. I, I know he'd like to do that. Well, don't you think he could bend the ball? And never mind that. He's coming in two rails to the 14 ball. Well, <laughs> that side pocket's been there since the game was invented. And somehow or another, we find it. I think we're liable to get to see that shootout. Uh, it's starting to look more and more like Hill Hill coming. Oh, up, huh? yeah. This could go a while, folks. I can tell you one thing. Ted Lerner and Nick Vaughn are on the edge of their seats right now, hoping this goes Hill Hill. I think that makes well, three of us. I have to admit, I would like to see one of those uh, shootouts. Uh, I haven't seen one of them today. Uh, quit praying, Ted. <laughs> quit praying. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's just praying there. He, he wants that to happen. <laughs> it would be interesting. Well, it's 11-10 in favor of Foldes and Boosty now with all the solids out in the open. Well, Boosty's uh, really uh, studying this rack carefully. He's had, uh, he's actually kind of let a couple games get away. He could actually have a pretty easy route to victory here at the end, but he's kind of uh, let a couple games get away from him. And uh, from my experience, Well, that eight ball looks like it goes right into the corner. It's just unfortunate for Boosty. Hit that four ball so solid. Kind of put a stop sign on the cue ball. But he does have the five into the side pocket. Yeah, and I think he can go all the way down table and come back up easy enough. Yeah, no. Nicely done. <laughs> he keeps falling, though, quite where he don't want to. He <laughs> well, he can use the one or the six ball to get back for the eight. I yeah. think that's one of the two balls he would save to come down for the eight to shoot that in the bottom corner. Yeah, he may end up going 2-6-1, the four ball to set up on the eight. No, he was able to get down. Ooh, this is uh, a little bit thin, I think. He got a little too much angle. He keeps falling uh, He keeps falling uh, where he really don't want to be a little bit. Uh, that's why I thought he might just draw back an inch or two, play the six on the side and the one, and then use the four to either come up one or two rails. But, uh, boy, he's got to be careful here. He's got to hit this ball good, and he he's either got to run into the one or the six or uh, – What a wow, nice touch. That was nice touch. Smooth. That, that was very nice. And now he just – 
make the one basically and uh, he's got a little angle where he slide a little to the right but he'll have a perfect angle on the green to go down for the eight how's this for being on the edge of your seat folks these guys are right on top of the action well he's uh he, he's got to love this angle that's uh he probably wouldn't put that much different if he had ball in hand well, I'll tell you what, it does have the ingredients of going hill, hill, and Boosty should sink this eight ball. Eleven apiece now. Whoever. Hit us with it. Well, uh, man, there's a lot of players. <laughs> There's a lot of players. Uh, when I was young, that uh, that made you sometimes feel like you were shaking in your boots. So. Well, he's made a stripe here, so he's got to take a stripe. Make yeah. what you take. Yeah. And then make all you can. Boy, I tell you <laughs> what, I believe. Boy, I tell you what, uh, I kind of like his position better than Boosty's. Uh, in straight pool, we always said at the world tournament, we, no matter, <clears throat> everybody always said the guy that's a favorite, the guy's shooting. <laughs> I tell you what, though, he's left himself uh, a little long. No gimme here, huh? Oh, no, he's going to have to stay down good on this. Uh, this is one that you want to be sure you see that object ball move before you do. Yeah, he's going to just try to slide over just a little bit. He's gonna, I think he's going to take the 11 and just try to slide over. I think he's just going to try to make the 11 and go to the left like what you're saying. Yeah. But I don't think you'll see him uh, hit this very hard. He's going forward with it. He's going, he wants to get above him. What's the plan here? Oh, he did slide over a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, that was the sense stroke here. Well, I'll tell you what, he's not back in line yet, but he's still in command. No, and he's got to play uh, one of these balls at least in the corner pocket, uh, probably the 11. Uh, he needs to fall pretty full on that 11, and uh, well, he may go after it right now because uh, he may save this stripe to set up on the 8. I kind of like that. And he may just uh, slide over uh, Al for the green ball in the same pocket, maybe. Yeah, that's, what it, that's a, what it appears to be. And if he should do that, keep in mind, this young man will be on the hill against Bustamante. Yeah, big, big game in this match here. Big, big game. Now he decided to go forward. Kind of like uh, that. Instead of going against the green, go with it, huh? Well, this uh, should be the, well, you know, this is, uh, see, he's kind of setting up to be on the wrong side of this 12 ball down here. He. Uh, he sure don't want to be going, as we look at the screen to the right, he, he wants to uh, be pretty full on this ball where he can just stop for the eight. Uh, he might just soft kill this, soft spin this in. Very nicely done. So this eight ball for Foldes, Vilmos, Vilmos Foldes puts him on the hill. One. Notice where he's placing the cue ball, not really at the intersection of the lines, just a little bit off to the side. He's been doing pretty he, good at this spot here. He changed sides here. He's been breaking from the other side, and uh, boy, he, oh, wow. Nothing. Holy Toledo. Uh, he come up dry again, Nick. Wow. Wow, wow. Look 
Gosh, he hit that ball. It looked real good. I mean, look. Uh, he got all them balls past the side, and uh, and he put a little extra in that. Uh, I kind of like the stripes, except for that 15 ball above the five. Yeah, he's going to go for the solids, though. Probably take the two right after this. Bump the 15 and get that two out of the way to open up that upper left-hand corner pocket for the three. It's probably going to be his first move. Uh-oh. Tell you what, that's less than ideal there. Uh, he went a little too far. He wanted to be uh, an inch or an inch or two to the left uh, would be a little better. I mean, I think he can still get there, but boy, you got to be sure you don't. Uh, he's got to hit this a little firm. Well, he didn't have any trouble with that one. Working in tight quarters as the mechanic that he is, he's going to try to get this three ball out of here, working the top half of the table and then coming back down towards the four, seven, and six where the eight lies. He's going to slide over, draw back some, and then try to fall, I guess, straight in on the seven or the four. Either one works, and then he'll probably save one of them for the key ball. Boots DeMonte sitting kind of sluggish, but he's been in that position before. Just hoping that he has one more shot at this table. Doesn't look too good, though. Yeah, if he makes this four, but then he still has to play position on that seven, unless he elects to use the six as a key ball. Oh, wow. I thought maybe he caught too much rubber there, but. Uh, well, we had the paramedics with the uh, defibrillator just in case. Uh, Ball just was to hit the floor on that. <laughs> stay on standby. <laughs> yeah, I pretty well like. Well, I don't know. It's not over yet, Nick. I don't think so. Mm. I, he drew back a couple inches. I'd rather stopped it dead, so I could swing around and play the sick. The eight in the lower left hand corner, but uh, he's looking for the short side of this eight well, ball, and better, the only thing he has is he that side. Be pocket. careful that you don't foul here with his shirt. Wait yeah. a minute, he got it, he's up there. This eight ball for a hard fought victory. Yeah, it certainly was, wasn't it? 13 to 11. Vilmos Foldes takes advantage of a struggling Francisco Bustamante.